Well, good morning, friends. Today we're going to do a video on how to grow broccoli. We'll be right back after the break. Well, welcome back, friends. A very popular uh, vegetable to grow in the fall is broccoli for those that like broccoli. I personally love broccoli, so does Nancy, and uh, our chickens really love it. So I'm gonna grow some extra just for the chickens too. So I wanted to give you a complete guide as much as I, as I can on how to grow this stuff. And uh, today we're gonna be uh, starting it from seed and we're gonna um, progress this video all the way out into the harvest. I'm going to start them from seed and we're going to transplant them into five gallon buckets. So if you have a limited space in your, um, in your own home, you can grow some of this in a five gallon bucket with, uh, you know, pretty easy. And if you have an earth bed, you can grow it in the earth bed as well. So I'm going to show you how to do it in a five gallon bucket as well as the earth bed. So Let's get started. First thing I gotta do is get some seeds in these um, in these starter trays. I got these seeds from johnnyseed.com on, uh, online. This is the Eastern Magic. It's a hybrid um, broccoli, grows very easy, tastes great. I've used it before and it's, it's a, a good producer, good and healthy and um, easy to grow. So it's got a real high germination rate, like 99%, which is awesome. So. Let's get these uh, seeds in the tray so I can get them into my seed starting rack and uh, get these things germinating. Let's get to it. Okay, here's how I start all of my seeds. From I use a 10-20 starting tray and I like to use the ones with the drain holes because I start my seeds outdoors so I don't uh, have a problem with the drainage of the uh, water seeping through and getting anything wet on the inside of my house or the inside of an indoor container, seed starting container, because I, I do all my seed starting outside. So I like to have the, the drain holes in mind because I want to keep my cuts, I want the water to fall completely through my cups and, um, and let me add water as needed instead of them standing in water for too long of a period of time, which rots my seeds. Okay, so that's, how, that's why I use the 1020 drain um, tray. Now I use my cups, my seed starting cups. I like to use the ones that have a, a you know, at least a two to three inch deep uh, cell because I want to get a good root system through here before I try to push, pull that uh, little seedling out of there. Next thing I do is I add my seed starting mix and I make my own seed starting mix. So if you want to learn how to make this stuff at home, you can. Uh, we have a video on our channel that explains how to do that and demonstrates it pretty clear. Or you can, if you only have one or two trays to do, then just simply go buy some seed starting mix at your local nursery. Um, for me, I have many, many seed trays that I need to start, so it's more economical for me to make my own seed starting mix. Okay, so next thing I do is I use the mix. And I fill up my tray, my seeds, seed starting cells. Once I have it good and leveled off like this, then I come back through here and I mash in all of these seed cells. Mash them in good and tight. Use your fingers, push them down in there because this thing is just full of air. And if you have air inside these cells when you're trying to start your seeds, they're not gonna germinate. You know, you're just wasting your money and your time and very disappointing. So you wanna keep these things good and tight when you get ready to start. So push them down good. And once I have them down, packed in there pretty tight, the next thing I do is I pre-moisten some people pre-moisten their soil before they put it in, but I've always found it easier to do it like this. So you can do it either way you want, it's up to you. So now that I got it tight, I pre-moisten each cell by flooding it a little bit. Okay. 
let that soak down just for a few seconds you see it just gobbles up that moisture it's so dry and once I got it where I don't see the water standing anymore then I tamp down the tray now it's really good and tight and it's moist I'm going to use some um, spinach seeds here for this demonstration simply because the seeds are nice and big and you can see them on the camera here's the seeds now what I like to do is I like to put two to three seeds in each cell I'll let those seeds germinate and as the seedlings get up mature a little bit bigger where they're an inch or so tall I'll come in with a pair of scissors and snip off you know the weakest looking seedlings and keep the best one so I thin it down to where I have one seedling for each tray so let's start out by putting a couple seeds in each one of these cells and I try to make sure that I get them kind of close to the middle of the cell because if you don't they run out to the end you know to the edge of the cup and I just don't like them to grow down the edge of the cup okay after I get the, uh, the seeds in the cups, and I come back and I add in some more soil and level that back off again to where you got right at about a quarter of an inch of um, soil on top of those seeds. And right now this looks like I got more than a quarter inch, but keep in mind, it's full of air. So once I get it in there, again, I mash it down a little bit. I hit it with a little bit of water. You'll see it sink down some more. So I'm I'm getting to that quarter inch, that magic quarter inch mark I'm looking for of soil over the top of the seed. You don't have to add very much water that time. And again, I tamp it down. And the last thing I like to do is I always put a tag in my seed trays. I like to write on what that seed is, what that tray is, and what date that I planted it. Okay, then I stick it right into the corner here in one of the cells, and that tray is ready to go to the seed starting rack and germinate. So hopefully in about 10 days, we'll have some spinach. Okay, got the seeds planted, ready to go, and we'll get them stuck into the uh, seed starting rack and get these things growing. Okay, got our broccoli in the rack, off and running. So we'll be back, and when, as soon as these germinate, and they go uh, get to where they're growing up and getting ready to harden off and we'll take it to the next step. So stick with us on the progression of this all the way to harvest. See you soon. Well, our broccoli seed starts have been in the seed starting uh, rack for two weeks today. So let's take a look at uh, where we're at with these. Come on up and let's take a closer look. Well, we've got some, uh, the, the seeds have germinated and we have some little seedlings coming up. Uh, not a real good germination rate, but really not bad. It's about average. Looks like I got about a 50, 55, 60% germination rate. But anyway, we'll keep working with it. Um, as you can see, the, the uh, seedlings are about two inches tall. Some of them are only about one inches tall and they've got some true leaves on them so now that they got the true leaves let's see if they can get a little traction and um, let's get these things going um, i want to get at least uh, 24 seedlings and doesn't look like i'm gonna quite make it but we'll keep hoping for the best and uh, as soon as they get a little bit bigger we'll harden them off and we'll we'll get them planted so we'll be back here in about let's take a look at it in about a, another week or so Well, our broccoli's hardened off. It's ready to go. I'm gonna get uh, this planted today. 
I'm going to put um, a couple of rows out in the uh, in the earth bed, and then we're going to put some in some five-gallon buckets so we can uh, grow them both ways. So you can see that it is doable both ways. So let's uh, head on over to the earth garden. I'll get those in first. Um, how I'm going to do that is um, I usually use fish, but me and Nancy have been so busy around here we haven't had time to go fishing. So uh, I don't have any fish to use in the hole, but you know any other time I would. But um, since I don't have the fish today, I'm just going to use blood meal. I'm going to put um, a good three or four tablespoons of this in each hole that I dig for the broccoli. This will give me a good boost of nitrogen, which is what I want to get this foliage going. And um, we'll get these all planted over there. The first thing I'm going to do is cultivate the rows with my little cultivator. Then I'll grade them out with my grading rake, smooth it out. Then I'll put my guide string on there and lay out my holes. I put these on 30 inch centers, 30 inches apart, and my rows are 36 inches apart. And these are big plants when they get up big, so don't, don't try to cram them too close together because the, uh, the foliage will grow together and it causes them to get leggy. So you want to give them plenty of room around them so they can get good ventilation and they have room to cascade out as they mature. So let's get these in the ground and then once we get these in the earth bed, we'll get on the five gallon buckets and we'll put four of them together and um, put them in the, in the grow racks and we'll wash them as well. So let's head on over to the uh, earth bed and get started. Okay, we got two rows of uh, broccoli in the ground in the earth bed. That's these two rows right here, you see. And uh, we'll get these off and running and we'll keep track of these during the progression of these plants during, during their life cycle all the way up until we harvest them. So stay tuned and we'll, uh, we got some more things along the way that we need to uh, uh, let you know about on how to grow these things. So let's go over back over to the planting table and see if we can't get four of these, four of these broccolis put into some five gallon buckets and get them started on the uh, grow table over there. See you at the planting table. Okay, we're back over here at the uh, seed starting area and I'm going to uh, put these uh, broccolis in these five gallon buckets. I got me some food grade buckets, you know, from my uh, Lowe's and I drilled me, you know, five or six holes in the bottom. And see if you can see that better. I use a three quarter inch paddle bit when I drill those and I drill five or six holes in there. And don't you worry about the soil falling through those little bitty holes because the peat that's in this uh, container mix will definitely clog them holes. Now I'm going to also be using um, the container mix that this is the container mix that I make myself and um, if you want to make some of this for yourself 
um, check out our video. Nancy will put a link up for you on how to make container mix at home. Um, this is how I do all my container mix. So that's the mix that I'm going to be using. And I hope that video will help you. So go check it out. Now, these broccolis are some big eaters, heavy eaters. So I'm going to put a big, heavy dose of blood meal in each of the buckets when I put the soil in and then I'll soak that down through then I'll you know add a little bit more soil on the top of that then I'll dig my hole and I'll add some more blood meal into the hole then I'll put the uh, broccoli in there and then I'll um, water it in final our final water in after I get them over to the grow tables but you may find that you have to uh, come back periodically uh, after these get gone about every three weeks and put another you know a good another good size handful of the um, blood meal and side dress each of your uh, plants because they're heavy eaters so let me get these buckets going and let's get them soaking and uh, get these plants in there so we can get them on the grow table let's get started <laughs> Okay, we got the bucket soaking. I'm gonna let these soak down about 15 minutes and um, when, we, when they soak down, we'll, we'll come back and uh, take it to the next step. Be back in about 15. Okay, our buckets have soaked down. At this point, I want to add in a little more soil to top it off. I get it up to about an inch or, an inch or so from the top of the uh, rim of the bucket. Okay. Next step is I, I've got the, the added soil that I just added on here. I take my hand and I push down in here about four inches deep. See that hole I just made? And then I take the bone meal and I'll take another real good handful of that, maybe even two. Put it in there. I stir that in there kind of good and kind of get it to the sides. Then I get a plant. right down in there collapse the sides up around it and I pack it a little bit and sometimes I add another handful of the soil a couple of handfuls okay we're ready to take that guy over to the grow table so let me get the rest of these in and we'll Head over to the grow table. Well, we got two rows of broccoli put in the earth bed this morning and uh, four five gallon buckets uh, with the broccoli planted in them. You know, this is a good way to uh, grow some broccoli for those of you that don't have a large area at your home. If you have just a small patio, uh, this is ideal. These five gallon buckets can uh, grow, uh, you know, good sized vegetables for you. 
and I usually make this rack right here to keep them in. If you want to make one of these racks for yourself to put on your patio or something, they're very easy to make. Nancy can put a link to this video on um, how to build a five gallon container uh, grow table. Um, she can put that on here for you and go check that video out because I think you can, I think anyone can do this, make one of these. So check that video out. Notice how I got the spacing on these spaced out at least 30 inches apart that gives them plenty of room to grow these things are going to get quite large remember so um don't crowd them keep them 30 inches apart a maximum of four of these in one of these racks is uh as all you can go three would be better but you can do four just don't put any more than that so we'll keep our eye on these as they grow along and uh we'll watch the progression of the broccoli in the earth bed as well as the broccoli in the containers and we'll be back periodically to check the progress with you so we'll see you soon well our broccolis have been in uh, the buckets for about two weeks now and as you can see they're starting to make a little progress and getting a little traction so uh, we're going to keep our eyes on these as they progress in the days ahead and uh, all the way up to harvest. So let's, let's head on over to the earth bed and take a look at how they're doing out there in the, uh, we got two rows out there in the earth bed and see what the progress is out there uh, compared to these. It's pretty much about the same. So let's go check it out. Well, here we are over at the earth bed. And these are the two rows of broccoli and it's, uh, it's this row right here and that row right there, these two rows and as you can see, they're really about the same as the ones that are in the uh, five gallon buckets planted at the same time. So um, as you can see, it really doesn't make that much difference in um, putting them in the container as putting them in the earth bed. But um, we'll keep our eye on these in the days ahead as these mature. They're on, they're, um, they got a long ways to go. So we'll be back shortly to watch the progress. Well, our broccoli's starting to get off on this uh, cool weather. We're finally finally getting down here in Florida and they're uh, really jumping, especially this one. He's really looking good. But um, I've got these things uh, staked up this week with my little bamboo stakes. I usually put three stakes and I, tra I trap the uh, stem of the plant inside those three st stakes like in a little triangle that way the wind can't damage them we just had like 20 mile an hour winds yesterday so it it was kind of hard on them so i um i uh staked them all up you know before the winds got got a hold of them and um that'll protect them in the days ahead because once these get up and they start to head they're going to get top heavy and they're going to want to kind of lean and it, it really won't hurt them but i just i don't particularly like that I don't want them to chance and risk um, one of them bending over and snapping that stem after I put so much into growing them. So investment of these little bamboo stakes is well worth it. I put them in, it traps them in there, keeps the stem and the stalk sturdy. And when it starts to make that big bunching head on the top, it's got some support to help it along and I get a better head. So. If you want to get some of these little bamboo stakes, you know, they're available at nursery centers or uh, Lowe's and places like that. If you can't find any, um, I, I, we have them on our Amazon link at the back of our uh, back of our channel. You can check them out and they're only 24 inches long. I get the short ones and you just stick them in and that makes a, a world of difference in your in your plant material um, during these windy days that are ahead. So. We'll be back in the days ahead. We'll take another look at these as they start to mature and um, start forming the, uh, the little broccoli head. Well, here's our broccolis over in the uh, earth bed and they're progressing along just peachy, doing just as good as the ones over in the um, five gallon buckets. And in the earth bed, just like I did with the um, five gallon buckets, I put the uh, bamboo stakes in, in, in a tr three triangle position around those stems. and give it a little extra support you know in, in anticipation of windy days ahead so it's good to be proactive put them out and get them in front of the wind before the winds hit that just tears them up so let's um try to be proactive and uh, get the uh, get the stakes on there 
before they're rent. So we'll be back in the days ahead. We'll take another look at these as they, as, as soon as they start to form the, uh, the broccoli heads. And I'm really looking forward to that. So we'll be back soon. Well, good morning, friends. Our broccolis are doing pretty good. Uh, the ones in the um, uh, five gallon buckets, they're a little bit slower than the ones in the earth bed. Uh, come on up here and take a look at this one right here. And you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's got some good head um, starting to form on it. It's still pretty good and tight. So we're uh, looking forward to this uh, get, getting a little bit bigger in, in the next couple of weeks and it'll be ready to harvest. But I've got some over in the um, earth bed. We can head over to the earth bed right now and um, go ahead and pick some, have some for supper. So let's head over to the earth bed and check it out. Well, here we are out in the earth bed and the uh, broccolis are doing just absolutely beautiful. And we've got a couple in here, uh, that, several of them actually, that are ready to be harvested. Here's one right here. Why don't you come on up and take a, a close look at this one. It's got a good head formed on it. It's not, still good and tight and it's, it, it needs to be harvested. I wouldn't let that thing go any longer. It's, it, when you see the tops of these florets starting to get kind of fat and they're not quite as dense as they were when they were a little bit smaller, then you need to go ahead and get them because you don't want them to bust out in the flowers and bolt. So go ahead and get them while you can so when they're right at about this point right here. So let me go ahead and harvest that one at this one here and let's see what we got. There we go, that's pretty. Nice, beautiful little floret cat, uh, broccoli head. So I'll take that in and uh, there you go. So you let the camera get a good focus on that. We'll take that in and let Miss Nancy cook that up. I'll get her a couple more to go with it, but it's um, ready to eat. So you could actually eat this raw, it's so good. But anyway, um, it's ready to go and I hope that you've had fun on this little journey of growing this broccoli together and maybe it'll be something you want to try in your um, fall garden this year. So I hope this video helped you and, and brought some peace to your life and, and you had fun watching it with us. So until me and Nancy see you next time, always remember, by his hands we are fed. Give us Lord our daily bread. Amen. Have a blessed day.